Hi there and welcome to the video. My name is Gareth and I'm going to show you how to get set up on replicate.com super quickly as a beginner. So first of all, we'll go to replicate.com and we'll go to the get started button in the top corner. Now it's going to ask you to sign in with a GitHub account. Now if you don't have one or you don't even know what it is, don't worry, just go to github.com, G-I-T-H-U-B.com and sign up for a free account there, which is a super quick process. And then once you've got that login information all confirmed, come back and enter it in here. Now, because my login information's cached on Replicate, when I click this button, it's just gonna take me straight in, where you would have a login page in between those where you just enter your GitHub login details. So it's gonna bring you to the documentation page when you first log in, and this has got guides and other information relating to all the models that are currently hosted on Replicate, or at least most of the models that are currently hosted on Replicate. I'm not gonna go into any of this now because it'll take forever, but there's a bit of bedtime reading for you there waiting. So the first thing I would do is to go up to your profile section in the top left side of the screen here, click on it, and you can obviously view and change your profile from here and customize like your profile picture and those kind of things. But you need to go to the account settings version at the first, account settings button, sorry. I'll bring up this section and go to billing. And this will give you information such as how much you've used in the current billing cycle and um, a list of your previous invoices, etc. But what you're going to need to do here is click manage billing. And from this point, you can add a payment method. Now, this is, I'm not going to go through this because I've already got one set up, but you just click add payment method and then you can enter all your typical details like on any other website and set it up. Now, before I carry on, it is worth noting that I need to reiterate this point. How Replicate works with billing is it doesn't bill you a monthly fee. There's no subscription fee. It, once you put your payment information in, you will only get charged when you actually use the service. So if I show you my invoices, so look, I've, I've gone a quite a big period of time here where I wasn't using the site at all. And so I've been invoiced zero. So it does not cost me anything. And then when I started picking it up again more recently, you could see I've started to accrue my monthly invoice cost there. So again, really worth pointing that out. You only pay for what you use and uh, there's no monthly commitments. And at the very bottom of this page, which is very useful for some people, is um, a spend limit. So you can go in there and put a monthly limit in dollars um, to, to cap you at your use so you don't shoot over your budget, which is great. So once you've got all that set up, let's go to the menu on the top right hand side, which is sort of the main sections of the site. I'm going to go to dashboard and dashboard just gives you again a little summary of your usage for the month so far. And the billing cycle on Replicate runs from the first of the month. So you'll at the end of at the first of the next month, you'll kind of that's when the billing cycle restarts and you'll get invoiced then for the previous month's uh, worth of usage. And you can see here there's a list of recent predictions and the predictions are basically when you've run a, a job. It's like when you've when you've um, run a sort of models generation here. So if I click on one of these job IDs, it's going to take me to an image on the screen of a previous job I've ran and all the information you can see it's black forest labs and you can see all the relevant information to it um, and then you can go and download it again or delete it and, and those kind of things you can delete the job and it's just a little a little summary of your more recent predictions and at the bottom recently pushed models this is models that you've generated yourself so this is models that you've customized and trained within replicate I've made one so far that I just call weird because it was an experimental one. Um, I'm going to look at making another one of those soon properly and I'll make a video on that for sure. So that's basically the dashboard section. You've got some other things at the top here within the dashboard, such as models. Again, that's my train model that I did myself. Predictions, which is a larger list of all of your jobs that you've run, etc, etc. I'm not going to go into the rest there because this is a beginner's tutorial after all. So now back to the top, go to the explore button. So we've done dashboard. Explore just shows you a little summary of the most recent updates in models to replicate. So you can go here and you can see they're pushing things like Flux 1.1 Pro Ultra, which is the latest version of Flux. You've got Recraft here, which is split into two different modules. Like one is more for vector style graphics and icons, and the other one is more sort of photorealism and general, um, general sort of Flux style image generation, as you would expect. Um, stable diffusion 3.5 etc etc you can see here so it's always worth checking this page out to get a little summary of what's new in um, what's new and popular on the site and then if we go further down there's some other bits here and at the bottom this section is quite useful for beginners and a lot of people overlook this 
See, I want to. So this is splits out all the functionality of hosted on Replicate into criteria. So do you want to generate images? Do you want to upscale images, etc., etc. And you click on one. So I want to generate images. And if you don't know what you're looking for, this is a great place to start because it's going to bring up and show you all the image models that it has on the system. And this is broken down. Oh, sorry. This is kind of filtered by popularity, which doesn't necessarily mean it's it's good nowadays. It might be an older model that's just had years of, of gaining popularity. So, you know, you can go through this and explore, but as you can see that the most popular one is, is an SDXL Lightning four-step model, which is still pretty good. But again, we've got Flux has kind of surpassed those kind of things now for most people. But it's still great to come and have a look here because you can find things that you would have normally missed just because you're not seeing a visual icon and they're just buried in a list of text somewhere. So this is just a really good place to come and get some inspiration maybe. And it's got the side, our picks, and it's got fastest image generation. So it gives you, it gives you some advice as to which models to lean towards depending on, depending on your own needs. Do you want fast and basically fast equals cheap? Um, or do you want, you know, this or that? So really good section to check out. And I would uh, recommend having a look at that when you've got a few minutes. Now we'll go over to the playground section, which is new. And this is actually really good because as you can see here, I've been messing around with this recently with a prompt um, regarding a cat eating cereal at a table with a glass of milk. I can't remember the exact prompt, but I could go into it and find out. But what this is, is it lets you run the same prompt or various prompts and various tweaks of settings across different models, but all within the same screen, this light box style view. So this is great for comparing like for like models or like for like settings across different models. So you can see here on this image, for example, it's been generated in Flux Dev, but then this one is the same prompt and possibly the same um, other settings generated in Flux Schnell, so the cheaper model. And then down here, that one's been generated in Flux 1.1 Pro and it goes on, etc., etc. So it's a really good way of doing some comparative comparative generations where you're seeing them side by side, because as I'll show you in a moment, when you just go to the main generation pages, it's just a one off page. So to do this kind of thing, you would have normally had to open up various models in different browser tabs or save them all to your desktop and compare them afterwards. So this is a really useful new option. And it is new, so they will be changing it as they go, I'm sure. Pricing. This is going to be a list of your price per hour, price per second for the GPU and the GPU compute, which is you don't really have to worry about all this up here because the image models themselves have um, an approximate cost all individually associated to them. And this is just a small list here of like more the more popular recent models. So you can see Flux 1.1 Pro is $0.040 an image. But what makes a lot more sense in my head, at least, is click this button to show how many images you get for a dollar. This just makes it far more sensible for my brain to actually compute what I'm using roughly. So 25 images for a dollar, that makes a lot more sense to me. And uh, you can have a look down here. But don't worry about coming to this page because I'll show you again in a second when we generate an image on the normal, the normal kind of um, single image generation page that the cost like this is laid out for each specific model as when you use it. So it's super handy um, and it's got a lot more down here. OK, and then the documents, blog and change log. I'm not going to go into that in this video. So let's go to the search bar. This is the last main section that we use to navigate the site. So let's say I want to use Flux. So if I just type in Flux, it will bring up lots of results. But at the top of each search result, it will bring in any collections that exist. They're always put above the main search results. And these are replicate grouped collections of different of different things. So you can see here for the word flux, it's got a collection of the flux models and underneath flux fine tunes, which are kind of like um, Laura's um, within replicate, which you can create for yourself and then you can share with other users. That's great. So you can click on those. And in theory, that's going to take me to um, a list of all the collection of all the flux models. However, they are sometimes not updated. So this one, for example, doesn't have the most recent version of Flux, which is the Ultra, the 1.1 Pro Ultra. So if you click on this, you might assume that Replicate doesn't have the new version of Flux, but it does. It just hasn't been updated in this model. I might actually email them about this because they might not be aware. Um, so if you want to absolutely make sure that you're getting the most recent version of things, 
even if it's in a collection up there, you can still keep going down and you can see Black Forest Labs, which is the um, the main, you know, these are the main Flux models here. Black Forest Labs, Flux Chanel Pro, Flux Pro, and it goes on and on. So you can go down there and make sure you get the right, um, the right version. So there we go, Flux 1.1 Pro Ultra. So it does exist, it just wasn't part of the wasn't part of that particular collect collection. So if I go to Flux Dev, for example, because that's a really good representative one of like main sort of parameters. It's a very popular, very popular model. So to generate an image on here, you will go to this and it will bring up your main parameter page here. And at the top, you've got the usage per image again. So you can always see the price on the page. And if you go down to the bottom quickly, what you will also see some example images, which you can click into and have a look at the settings. But you also got down here the cost per dollar roughly for that model. So Flux Dev is approximately a dollar for 40 images. Now, why this is um, why this is approximate is it does depend on your settings. So if you increase the number of steps past the default, it's going to make the job take longer to run. Therefore, it's going to use more GPU time. Therefore, it's going to cost you a bit more. Now, there's no way of seeing how much more this is going to cost because it's not a real time. It doesn't real time update the payment, but it's just something to be aware. And likewise, if you ran less steps, it would probably be cheaper. So just something to bear in mind, that cost is based on the kind of the default settings. So to make the most of this, I'm just going to show you a quick example. Let's get rid of that. I've got a prompt in on, the, on my other monitor here, which I'm just going to paste in. And this is one I like to use to just test um, flux models and settings. So let's go through the parameters quickly on here. These will be very familiar if you've used any uh, flux on anything else or any kind of stable diffusion type um, setting before. You've got your prompt aspect ratio. Image, so the image file and the prompt strength. These relate to image references, which I'm not going to touch on in this um, video, but they are there. Number of outputs, how many images you want to generate at once. Number of inference steps, guidance or CFG number there. Seed, output format, etc., etc. You can see that here. Let's change that. Now, at the fast, this go fast button is checked as default on um, on Flux Dev now, and that just um, that just makes the job. It, basically, in layman's terms, you get slightly less quality for a faster, therefore a cheaper job. Um, and most of the time, I think the trade off's worth it. But it's up to you to experiment. So I'm just going to click run, and as you'll see, because this is running on. Um, you know, external GPUs on like um, in the cloud, shall we say, not running on your local hardware. You can you could use this service on an absolute junk old machine, and you'll still get the results super quick. And once you've got your results, that you can just click on them to download an individual image, or you can click on the download button here underneath all of them, which will download them as a compressed like zip file, and you can share, etc. Click tweak it to adjust. Now, one bit of information that is useful in these log in this log down here at the bottom, if you scroll back up to the top of the log, you will get the seed number for the job. So that's where you obtain your seed in order to go and enter it back in and then make any adjustments you, you would like um, with your seed locked. So you can see on this screen, it's nice and easy to use, but you can see how the playground view is actually incredibly useful um, by letting you control and have all these image generations or within this big light box style configuration and i have to say i think that's about it for the um, beginner's guide so that's all you really need to know to get started in using i um, mean generating images and music and doing all kinds of other ai related functions on replicate.com if you enjoyed this tutorial i would really appreciate a like or leave a comment and let me know what other kind of stuff you'd like to see and thanks for watching i'll see you in the next one